It's in motion. How's it going, Exiles? My name is Ralph, and today we're talking about some more Ascendancy Trees for the expansion that's going to drop March 4th. Let's get hyped. Today, we're talking about which she can choose from. Necromancer, Occultist, and Elementalist. Hype. We got Summoner, Hype, Summoner, Flavor. There's a four two paths on this tree, which is pretty cool, and then one four path. And the small nodes all have... 15% increased minion damage, so at least you're going to get 45% increased minion damage by the time you're done here, which is pretty good. Uh, we'll start We'll start here. 4% increased cast speed. That's okay. 4% is not too much, but it's, it's not 3. <laughs> Commander of Darkness. Or as you cast, grant 4% increased damage to you and allies. Or as you cast, grant 2% increased attack and cast speed to you and allies. This is awesome. You want to stack auras, buff your minions a whole lot, buff you a whole lot, and then just get more buffs for doing it. With Prism Guardian, you can easily get six auras, so that would be like 24% damage for you and your minions, and 12% attack and cast speed for you and your minions. Definitely a solid node. I like this. It's, it's good, and it makes you good in party play also. Over here, 6% cast resist. Eh, that's okay. Chaos Resist is hard to come by, though. So, whatever. 20% increased Chaos Damage. That's pretty hard to get on the tree normally, so that's pretty good. 15% Chaos Resist. That's awesome, so 21 total with these two talents. So maybe if you want to do some low-life stuff, that's what I'm thinking already. Some hipster cheap low-life. Minions have 50% Chaos Resistance. Who cares? Your minions spread Caustic Cloud on death, dealing 10% of their maximum life as Chaos Damage. That's pretty cool. So it's Caustic Cloud, kind of like Caustic Arrow, so it's not going to stack, I'm pretty sure. But I mean, when I first looked at this, I was like, you don't really want your minions to die, and they're just going to, and you'll get a little cloud that does 10% damage. So, I mean, 10% of their maximum life, so who cares? But you could do some pretty fun stuff with this. There's some good Chaos Damage Over Time nodes right by the Spectre on the Talent Tree, right by the Extra Spectre talent, and there's those life regen, chaos, over by the shadow, so there's some chaos damage over time you can be doing scaling with this, also it's not just your zombies it's just minions death it's not like a minion instability when it's reduced to low life so if they expire, they don't have to be reduced to low life They just when they expire they're considered dead they'll drop this cloud, so you could do some summon skeletons or you could do SRS with less duration. In the next patch, less duration is going to get a more damage multiplier on it. It's not going to be very large, but still. And you could get minion life on it, so just, you know, SRS, faster casting, minion life, and then less duration. Just a quick four link. Summon this little bomb. It's going to run up and then explode on the enemy because it'll have such a short duration. And then they'll do a little chaos cloud. I think it's pretty cool. Look decent idea. You could have it next to your other minions, like alongside your zombies. You could just have this kind of chaos bomb you throw out. So so I like this. If you're creative, if you do some different new stuff, this this is kind of fun. This one's just solid. Oh, well, let's do this one. This one, the small nodes have 10% increased life, which is nice. I mean, I always struggle to get my minions living at first when I'm doing maps. This is when I, I try to push the map content. My my minions always die when I get to a really hard pack, like a, a sub-fizz or a fizz or a mob pack, and it's just, like, really irritating, so I always like minion life. The first one, Flesh Binder. You and your minions have 1% additional physical damage reduction for each zombie you own. This is nice. It's a really cool talent. Um, 1%? is not that much. However, you can get up to 10, 10 zombies easily with talents and uniques and stuff. And this tree might actually make some of those crappy summoner uniques worth it. I mean, in some cases they are worth it today, so yeah. 10% physical damage reduction too is, is solid. If you're stacking this and endurance charges, you could get a lot of fizz reduction. Still, I don't think it's as good as this one alone. It is a tanky talent, though, so on Hardcore, you would definitely want this if you were a summoner. E even without this next one, Soul Weaver. Spectres have 100% increased max life. Oh, I love that. 
specters have 100% increased damage. I love the max life, because when your specters die, you want to just blow your brains out. It's so annoying to have to go resummon your specters, so maybe, finally, they won't die. Get some Vitality Aura, the best one in the game. And 100% increased damage is pretty sick. You can get one specter from that pair of boots, you get two from Dual Wielding Midnight Bargains, you can get one on the tree, so you can have like four specters, There's, I know you can get some other, so you can even have five, you could have an army of specters, get that annoying revenant with the great audio effect, and you could just be summoning these, these guys would be doing so much damage, get like a six link specter build, ooh, I really like this talent, just because it opens up a build around specters, well, it, it just makes that build way better. And it makes it, it's a cool option, because typically it's just like, oh, I have zombies, I have zombies, you know, some people don't even really rely on the specters too much, but this, you could have, like, an army of them just going ham for you. Over here, cast speed, it's okay, it's just like this one, and then spirit eater, you and your minions have 30% increased damage if you've consumed or destroyed a corpse in the past four seconds. Four seconds is not that long, however... You're going to be consuming corpses all the time, and 30% increased damage for you and your minions is pretty strong. Can't really argue about that. And if you're doing the whole summoning thing right, hopefully you're, you're consuming a corpse with one of the flesh or bone offerings every four seconds. Eh, not too great, but I mean, it's not four seconds isn't that long, but you're going to be doing this all the time. And 30% increased damage is great. So no, it, it is good. But it's extremely impressive with this talent up here. Also, just a wording issue. Consumed or destroyed, so consumed with the offerings, that would work. Destroyed, like detonate dead. I'm not sure if shatter is considered destroy. Not like it's too applicable, but I'm just curious. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I know detonate dead would work, though. Mistret, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 10% increased skill effect duration, which is awesome. Vol skills, or the, the offerings themselves. This one, 20% increased skill effect duration. So you get 30% just for being there, which is a lot, which is really solid. Your offering skills also affect you. When I saw this node, my head exploded. And this necromancer tree was one of the first ones to come out. My head exploded. Melee witch, just because of that. Everything you want witch. Melee, just... It's so good. Bone Offering gives 30% block, 30% spell block, and you get like 600 life when you block. That is so much tankiness, it's not even funny. It's overpowered. It's downright overpowered. If you scale this, okay, so, and, and then you get the offerings when you get 30% damage. Flesh Offering gives you Vol Haste, basically. And you can still use Vol Haste. You get 30% increased of skill effect duration. I'd, because Flesh Offering is 30% increased cast speed, attack speed, and movement speed. And and then you could get this, where the 30% increased damage every time you're using Offering. You're going to want to get so much duration, so you can keep up both Offerings if possible. You just want to rotate them, and you're going to be doing it as much as you can. You're going to, you're going to want to scale the attack speed, I mean cast speed though, so you're not spending too much time. But, grab these two. Grab this, maybe grab this if you're trying to be tanky. Have your army of zombies running alongside you. Just be meleeing stuff down with frickin' elemental hit. It won't even matter. Maybe grant, get this one instead. Get a lot of auras and be running around and just get the increased... Because this gives you attack speed and cast speed. So this would be good for a melee, bone offering, flesh offering witch. This talent is so cool. And let's not forget, dominating blow. Oh, wow. It really enables dominating blow. This talent makes the tree... Uh, it's so good, because this enables the Spectre build, this is kind of a new, sort of interesting mechanic to play with. This is just straight up auras for the aura builds and the aura summoner. This is the offering, I don't know why these aren't... I think this should probably go into this, because this whole offerings affect you, these, toe po th these two points, that seems mandatory to me. This talent is amazing. Look up bone offering, look up the numbers, they're real. I don't... This is just so hardcore viable. I, I want to play this. I want to play any witch that utilizes this in Bone Offering. Overall, I'm, pr I'm very pleased with this tree. It 
it definitely could use a little more interesting choice. I would like to see a talent or something that can just maybe increase the number of golems you can have, because golems kind of suck right now, and it'd be cool if you could have a talent that's like, you can have two golems instead of one golem, like flame golem, ice golem, and chaos golem, you know? And there's going to be stone golem coming out. I'd like a talent where you could have an additional golem, but that's besides the point. Overall, I like this tree. The art's sick. The theme is sick. Now on to the overpowered tree, the occultist. She has two four branches and two two branches. And the small nodes here, all of them each have in common 8% energy shield. 8% energy shield? I don't remember seeing a marauder tree that had 6% life. 8% energy shield, so you get 24% just for being here. Pretty good for hardcore so far. Let's let's check out this one on the left. 20% crit. 10% chance to gain a power charge on crit. 1 to max power charge. 10% is pretty low. I don't know if this is sustainable. I think it depends on how much crit chance you have, and it also depends on how many mobs you're hitting. Still, power charges are not easy to generate. It's usually a pain to generate power charges. Frenzies usually second most painful and endurance is easy as hell. So I think this is a good. I think 10% is good. It's probably balanced. I kind of wish it was a little bit more, but it's it would probably be broken if it was any more. So a little power charge flavor since you're getting the witch. Also, one to max power charges, so you get 7 from the bandits in the tree. And then you have 8 and then dual wield void batteries for 10 have that 160% reduced damage, but at max power charges, you're going to have like 10 times whatever, you know, 10 times a crazy amount of damage. I, I don't know, just a funny idea because everyone's going to be able to afford dual void batteries, I'm sure. Um, let's look down here next. We'll do the four, the four trees next. So we've got some power charge flavor. Definitely good for your crit tanky witch because you got the energy shield stuff going on. 10% increased chaos damage. Pretty good. Void beacon. Nearby enemies have minus 20% chaos resistance. Nearby enemies have 25% reduced life generation. Who cares? But that first part... Am I right? Death's Oath? New build? New build incoming? <laughs> Probably not, but <laughs> um, this seems boring at first. However, minus 20% chaos resistance, there's like no way to remove chaos resistance in the game right now, and I'm pretty sure there's not a single mob that's going to have like over 75% chaos resist, so this is basically 20% chaos pen. And nearby enemies, nearby, it's hard to know exactly what that means, I know there's that. Uh, dying Breath Staff, which has the the nearby enemies take the curse effect or something like that. It's basically like an aura. I'm pretty sure it covers most of the screen, so I think that's pretty reliable. And they added the new Chaos spells, even with things like Infernal Mantle and the Consuming Dark, you could do some the Chaos damage. So, this is probably a very strong node. Yeah, this is good. 20% pen is, is very solid. I know it's not exactly 20% pen, but it basically is, given what we have in the game right now. We've got the chaos flavor, the crit flavor. This this is definitely a good uh, this is a good talent. Melee Chaos Witch incoming. No, I'm just kidding. Increase curse duration. Oh, so this is the curse area. Curse duration is so useful. <sighs> I really wish this was curse effect, especially when this is 20% crit and this is 10% chaos damage. These ones are energy shield recharge rate. It's curse duration. Give it, change it to effect. Profane bloom. Cursed enemies you kill explode, dealing 10% of their life as chaos damage. Ooh, the abyssal cry on top of this. Enemies you curse take 10% increased damage. That's nice. That's really solid. 10% increased damage, just they take that. 10% increased from what you were going to do. And... Them exploding for chaos damage. So definitely some chaos synergy here. Because the nearby enemies are going to have minus 20% chaos resistance in this. This is okay. 
alone, yeah, it's it's okay. I mean, applying curses can be kind of annoying sometimes. I mean, casting it, curse on hit setups, or the auras, be it what you want, do what you want. This is all right. Still, I really wish it was on curse duration. Here. Malediction. Enemies can have one additional curse. Oh, man. Back on the talent tree, but in the form of an ascendancy subclass. Pretty exciting stuff. That's awesome. When you kill an enemy, for each curse on that enemy, gain 4% of non-chaos damage as extra chaos damage for 4 seconds. The second part's kind of stupid. When you kill an enemy, I don't like on kill effects. If it's not sustainable on bosses, you want it to be able to be sustained or activated on your character at all times. So on kill, eh. For each curse, gain 4%. So if you had that, if you well, there is actually already one on the skill tree. And then if you had the one here, so you have three curses, 12% of non-chaos damage as extra chaos damage. But still, I mean... You'd probably be scaling a chaos damage skill if you got these nodes. So maybe this isn't good because it's of non-chaos damage. Uh, it's okay. The second part is kind of iffy, a little weird, and four seconds isn't that long. But if you're clearing mobs, of course this is good. And But compare it to the Itziri Flask, it just doesn't seem that great. But enemies can have one additional curse. That is awesome. That is so good. You, Three curses on mobs just by playing this tree and then getting the one in the top left of the witch, you're right there anyway. Pretty pretty sick. I'm excited to see what the tri-curse builds being more common. And also there's the uniques, the, the boots and the ring that give an easy curse. You could have some pretty funny stuff going on. Pretty tanky stuff. And then, so this stuff, curse, crit, some chaos, weird stuff. I think these two points standalone are a little weird, but but still, still cool. We have a theme going here. This next section, the right section. Hardcore, CI meta, it's coming back. This stuff is crazy. Two points, ju two points for this beginning part. I don't, so you get energy shield recharge rate. Okay, 100 to max energy shield. You paid two points for this, by the way. So even after normal labyrinth, 100% ES. We can probably we can finally start our ES. I mean our yeah our CI characters in in cruel. 30% <laughs> increased energy shield recharge rate. That's nice. That's great. So you got 45 if you're here. Energy shield recharge is not interrupted by damage if recharge we gain in the past four seconds. I don't I don't understand this talent. It doesn't not interrupted. What do you mean? That's the part about energy shield is that it can be interrupted. That's why you don't pick energy shield and a couple other reasons, but still that is so broken. That is so broken because if it starts and it's gone for four seconds, in four seconds it's probably going to be full. And and then you come up here, 1% of energy shield regenerated per, per second for each enemy you've killed in the past four seconds immune to stun while on full energy shield. Ugh, so if you take a big hit, you're probably not going to get stunned, and then you're probably not going to be in danger. And I mean, hey, if you're playing CI, stun's a problem. Not with this talent most of the time. If you're properly leeching or properly regenerating, you're going to be at full all the time. 1% of energy shield regenerated per second, so not life regen, for each enemy you've killed in the past 4 seconds. So if you're clearing you're gonna have up this regen all the time. I cannot believe this talent. It is so broken, and I'm telling you, I looked at this tree, and I, I freaked out. I was like, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute here, guys. Energy shield. Energy shield on all the small nodes. I was like, wait, wait, crit. Chaos damage. Power, the power charged crit on, wait. And I was like, soul strike quiver. The 150% faster start of energy shield recharge. So, energy shield recharge is not interrupted by damage if it began in the past 4 seconds. And, you're going to have 45 just from being here. You're just going to need to get a little bit of recharge rate on the tree. You're in that re it's going to start so frequently and it won't be interrupted by damage. Soul strike bow witch CI bow soul strike witch coming at you. Ascendancy new meta on hardcore. I bet I hope I'm playing it, and it's a crit base, so you can do the power charge on crit, the, the crit, it, it's so good, and there's a little added chaos damage on it, 
So you could do this maybe, or or even this one. I don't know because they're gonna. You can scale the chaos damage, but you're getting probably these four on hardcore. This is so broken. This makes energy shield so overpowered. If it wasn't good enough already, I I don't know. It, this is insane. I love this tree. Really strong witch theme. Get the power charge, the curses. She is the cursor. I wish the curse kind of had a little more stuff. The most exciting part here is the one additional. Let's be real. The, the kind of random chaos damage here is a little funky, but the ES flavor. The ES flavor is so strong and so good. We're talking, you know, Oxium, back in the market, Dream Fragments maybe even, because you might have that immune to stun, but if you don't pick this talent, this one's good enough. 100 is nice, 100 ES is nice. So that Eye of Kyula maybe, I, this talent blew my mind. Really blew my mind. I love this section, just for the, the energy shield love. I would love to see a CI meta, oh man. Overall, I really like this tree. Really good stuff, and the art is sick. Let's take a look at the last tree. Elementalist. Oh man, you know, you got some summoner, you got some overpowered hardcore energy shield CI build, and then you, you gotta hit up the elemental, you know, the because it's the witch. We were waiting for the elemental, the elemental tree. We were waiting. So all of these have 10% elemental damage. Makes sense with a name like Elementalist. Let's start, well, I like these ones quite a lot, so let's start with this one down here. 50% increased duration of elemental status ailments. Uh, I guess that's okay if you're scaling status ailments. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Seems, seems alright. Shaper of Desolation. 20% chance to gain elemental conflux. Conflux. For 4 seconds when you kill an enemy. So if you're clearing packs, You'll have it, 20%. Let's be real. Four seconds, and it lasts for four seconds. While you have elemental conflux, all damage from hits will cause chill, shock, and ignite. Well, that makes sense to me. Just throw it all on there. Uh, I don't really understand this talent. Why? Why is it got to cause all, all effects? All status ailments? I mean... Okay. There's some other elemental nodes that are pretty broken in other ascendancy trees, like some in the Templar. So I guess this is all right. But for two points, just when you're clearing mobs, oh, they're gonna just be chilled, shocked, and ignite, because you can keep up that four, per second, four second buff if you're killing fast enough, and it's on kill, so it promotes the fast play style. It's just kind of meaningless against bosses. I don't know. I mean, it's cool, right? You'll feel like an elemental, like, avatar master, but it seems a little like, oh, you get it all. It just seems a little lazy. I guess so, the duration of status ailments is actually good, I, I guess. Then, Beacon of Ruin. Elemental status effects caused by your skills spread to other nearby enemies. Radius 9? A little sword. A Radi little radius little sword. Ah, uh, I don't know. I mean, this is alright. Elemental status effects spread. That's good like Elemental Prolif, but I think Elemental Prolif should be better. Elemental Prolif has the less multiplier, which is a pain, but this has a 9 radius? Kind of just makes you wish this just had 12 and Elemental Pro. I, I don't know, because 9 is so small, but you'll have all the status elements proliferating all the time. This is okay, really only good for clearing anyway. Pretty exciting, I guess, if the mobs are tightly packed to watch it all spread. Cool. I like how there's no less multiplier. It's all right. Over here, three percent chance to free shock and ignite. Seems a little silly with this one. Three percent is really low. The most reliable way to put on status ailments is with crits. I wish these chance to freeze shock and ignite values on the tree and here were a lot higher. I wish you didn't have to use crits to get advantage of them. I suppose you don't because you can get that chance up pretty high. Three percent. Seems pretty low for Ascendancy Trees. Liege of the Primordial. 40% increased damage of each golem type for which you have a matching golem. Of each damage type for which you have a matching golem? Maybe we'll get two golems? Each damage type? Eh? Multiple golems in the future? Maybe I predicted it? 40% eh. is a lot, so if you have Flame Golem... Rip, no lightning golem, sorry, arc, sorry, lightning builds. 
but Ice Golem gives you the crit, Flame Golem gives you the damage, so you can get a lot of those damages. Your Elemental Golems are immune to Elemental damage because they're not tanky and they suck. Thank you. 100% increased effective bonus is granted by your Elemental Golems. What? What, what about what about Chaos Golem? I want the Fizz Reduction. And I'm actually curious, for each type of damage type for which you have a matching Golem, that first stat, they have Stone Golem coming out. Will that give you physical damage? Or stone damage? Chaos Golem will probably give you Chaos damage. That's pretty cool. But this is an elemental tree, so it's useless. I don't know. That's pretty weird. And the picture for the art is a Chaos Golem. That's a little strange. 100% increased effective bonuses, though. That's like a lot of damage from Flame Golem. 40% of the damage type and the... Like 40% he'll give you if it's doubled or something like that. That's pretty good. You'll get like 60% crit from Ice Golem. That's not bad. This node, the first iteration of this node, sucked. And in the State of Exile podcast, they insulted Golems, and they didn't like the node. It seems like they changed it trying to, to counteract both of those things. Uh, Alright, we did this, we did that. This one. 6% all res. Uh, elemental tree, I guess. It makes sense with the theme of this branch, but it's not too much. Not too much all res. It's okay. Paragon of Calamity. For each element you've been hit by... For each element you've been hit by damage of, in the past 4 seconds, 40% increased damage of that element. That's pretty good. For each element you've been hit by damage of, in the past 4 seconds, 8% reduced damage taken by that element. That's really nice. So, if you're doing a lightning damage build, or fire damage build, I would love to... You probably want to roll those those map mods, like monsters do extra damage as fire, lightning, or such and such, you probably want to do for your build. It's pretty cool. I like that. And you get the reduced damage taken. Really nice. Obviously, OP synergy with Cloak of Flame and Lightning Coil and Taste of Hate because they weren't good enough. This is a tanky talent for sure. I like it because if you're getting bombarded by a certain elemental damage, then it's going to reduce it a bit. Definitely a cool talent. Over here, this is my favorite branch. 10% 10% increased elemental damage, attack and cast speed. I like that they did attack and cast speed. Thank you. Don't restrict the witch too much. I like that we can be creative with these trees, even though they do seem like they're putting you in a cookie cutter theme. I like that there's a broad array of things you can try with them. So thank you for the attack speed. Pendulum of Destruction. I love this talent. Every 10 seconds, gain 100% increased elemental damage for 4 seconds. I like this playstyle because you're going to get it for 4 seconds every 10 seconds, so 40%, you know what I mean. You could, just, you could just say, oh, it's this percent increase, but no, it's not. You get that big damage every 10 seconds. So what are you doing without when the buff is off? You're running around, you're dodging the monsters. When you're when you get the buff, you're screenshotting it, doing your vol skill, your vol spark. Or, you know, hitting the mob hard, and then you're running around, getting the buff, running around. I like this. It supports that kind of run around, wait, the combat's a little more, not just clear speed, mow you down, kind of mindless. It's it's more like thinking about a strategic timing. I like this talent. And then, it goes into a pretty wonky talent. Mastermind of Discord. Damage penetrates 20% cold if you used a fire skill for in the past 4 seconds. Damage penetrates 20% lightning resist if you use a cold skill in the past 4 seconds. Damage penetrates 20% fire if you use a lightning skill in the past 4 seconds. I was like, oh man, this is a little weird because cold resistance, it'll penetrate cold if you use a fire skill, but there's a gem for cold to fire, and it was like, ugh. And lightning resistance if you've used a cold skill, but there's Call of the Brotherhood. The last one, though, you can do some pretty funny stuff with. You could do some... Uh, Call of the Brotherhood, Avatar of Fire, some Cold to Fire, Fire Arc Build, do all those things just to get the 20% pen. Oh yeah, I don't know, it's, it's funny stuff, cool synergy. Also, this is just overpowered for skills with the tag of every single element. You'll just get 20% pen on all of them. Discharge, Wild Strike, Elemental Hit, coming back hard. Oh yeah, this is gonna make it. This is gonna shoot it, shoot it into the meta mainstream. If you know what I'm saying, I really like this talent though. I think it's pretty cool. I kind of wish the pens were maybe switched in order. Like I said, the only thing I can really think of is fire arc. 
I don't know if this is sub trying to support a meta where you're like rotating spells, where like you use a fire spell, then you use a cold spell, then you use a cold spell, then you use a lightning spell, because that's not really what D3 is like. I mean, <laughs> D3 <laughs> PoE is the game where you spam one skill, or you try to, or something like that. Usually it's what you end up doing, but I like the idea of a PoE where you can alternate skills. Still overpower with Discharge and Wild Strike. Pretty cool synergy with Wild Strike, actually. And this node goes into it. Really nice. Some of the the tree, though, I guess was, I was waiting for an elemental section, an elemental tree, waiting for the caster kind of DPS of the witch. This one's a little weird. This one's also a little weird. It's all about the status ailments. And this is like the golem elemental damage. And I guess you would take this one just for tankiness, but... Most builds are probably just going to do this and this. Not too much. And I probably wouldn't even play... I probably wouldn't play this tree on softcore. I mean on hardcore. I'd probably play it on softcore. And I don't I don't think the tools are that interesting. I'd probably rather play the Occultist just for that awesome energy shield stuff. But still, I think they, they did a pretty good job. Especially over here. I hope this radius gets buffed. Still really really cool flavor really good like strong elemental just overload dps kind of stuff the 100 percent increased damage that's really gonna be powerful and the the pen over here and then you have the es cursor power charge all the witch feel that you get from the, the big talent tree and then the summoner which is also felt on the talent tree really cool flavor overall i like these all quite a lot this one you know, I is gonna probably break some things. And you can definitely do some creative stuff with this. And you can this one's okay. This one's alright. I'm still getting really hyped for a sentence to you guys. I'm gonna do the rest of the review soon. Let me know what you guys think, and thanks for watching.